power from the engine. These are the exhaust pipes, of course, from the engine and with the muffler. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. There's a, 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 a actually, the belts are here, and they transfer from the, the engine crankshaft up into the gearbox, this being the gearbox. There's also a power takeoff to this drive shaft that goes to drive the tail rotor. Uh, this is the main rotor shaft, actually it's inside this housing. Um, oil cooler, keep the engine oil cool. The uh, helicopter engine spends a lot more time at full power because whenever you're hovering, you're at near or somewhere close to full power, where an airplane primarily is at full power only for, for a couple of minutes for, or five minutes or so take off and climb. These will spend a lot more time. And also, when they're at maximum power, they're using minimum airspeed, so there's not a lot of air flowing over the engine. So they got a cooling fan to draw air over the engine and, and keep the engine cool. And because the, uh, they spend more of their lives at uh, high power settings, uh, they, they tend to not last quite as long. This is the fuel tank, by the way. Uh, you'll notice that it's very simple. Uh, these are steel uh, tubes. Some of these tubes, like this, this is an aluminum tube. You, uh, you can tell by the, the size of it where the ends are fixed. Whenever you see a welded joint here, you can pretty much be sure it's, it's a steel tube uh, because aluminum, most the high strength aluminums don't weld very well. We'll get into later today and next week. Uh, these are control linkages up to the swash plate. We'll notice that when we move the, uh, the stick, this is the cyclic. Notice how the blade, if we pinch up or back, notice how the blade change, it changes different on each blade. If we roll, we get the same thing. Collective is between the seats. If we raise the collective, the pitch changes uniformly. The uh, blades, notice, are a near symmetrical section. You might ask what these little tabs are out here. These are, if you look at them, what you want in a helicopter is you want the, all three blades to operate the same plane of rotation, so they all have to be the exact same angle of attack. There's some adjustment to that angle of attack. If one is out of adjustment the other, it may ride higher or lower than the other. These are actually a little target. They're not a winglet or anything. There's a little X on here, so you, what they do is They've got a strobe light system so that they aim the strobe light at this and as the, the blade is spinning on the ground, they can track where the individual blades are and if one is, is flying higher than the other or lower, you can adjust through the pitch links, you can adjust the angle attack of that blade individually and get them all rotating the same plane. So this is just a target for that, that strobe light. Uh, some other features, you, well, you, you notice, take a look at the airfoil, it's a semi-symmetrical, near symmetrical, it might even be symmetrical, I'm not exactly sure, but it's very close to symmetrical airfoil. Again, that gives you minimum pitching moment, so it reduces any twist of the blade. These are metal blades. Some larger helicopters actually use have blades that are hollow, but they're pressurized, and they've got a sensor in the cockpit that, that constantly is sensing the pressure in each of the blades. If there's a drop of pressure in one of the blades, what does that mean? probably a crack. If there's a crack in one of the blades, you need to get on the ground like right now. Typically it'll turn on a big red warning light uh, saying you, you've got an impending structural failure with your blades. And that's one way of tracking the helicopter blades. We'll talk about uh, blade life when we get into the uh, uh, topic in a couple of weeks uh, about safe life and such. Uh, but normally rotor blades have a finite life after a certain number of hours. Uh, developed based on the design and testing of it, you throw them away and put a new set on. Uh, because you cannot tolerate cracks in a rotor blade. If you have a crack in it and you lose part of it, uh, it's crash, burn, die time. So uh, that's one of the things that makes helicopters more expensive to, besides the additional mechanical complexity. And as you'll see with the control system, the transmission, this is a lot more complex machine than this is. They do, they weigh the same, or virtually the same, uh, and do a similar mission. They're both uh, flight training, but this takes almost twice the power that this does and flies about two thirds as fast. But it can take off line vertically. If we look at uh, the control system, if I move the uh, the cyclic, you notice it's moving. In this case, this is this is the fixed swash plate. This is the rotating swash plate. So when when you rotate the blades, you'll see that this part is rotating. As I move this. 
it's transferring, there's a bearing in here, it transfers the motion to the rotating swash plate, which goes in through this, this is a pitch change link that goes in to the, uh, it's attached to the blade to change the pitch of the blade as I move the controls. And that's how we control where we're going with the blade. You'll notice that there is a, an attach point here, that the, this is near the leading edge. Recall, lift it as uh, the, the center lift is at about the quarter cord point, which is about where that's located. As we spin the rotor, the advancing blade has more aerodynamic drag on it than the retreating blade. So it wants to get pulled backwards, whereas the retreating blade, the, that load is reduced, so it wants to swing forward. So this actually allows a little bit of blade movement fore and aft. If we just let it f move freely, it could vibrate and, and, and bang off the stops and destroy it pretty quickly. So we've got this, this is a, a, a rotary damper, it's like a shock absorber in a car. It's to, to dampen the motion. So as this blade is, they call it lead and lag, as it's moving back and forth in the plane of rotation, this dampens that movement to, to control it so we, it doesn't set up a vibration. And that's attached to the trailing edge uh, via a rotary damper. You can see that this, so this damping mechanism in here rotates as the blade leads and, and lags. Uh, and that dampens the vibration uh, and the motion of it. Uh, the, the tail boom, again, is, well, in this case, the main part of the boom is a riveted aluminum uh, tube, kind of like a fuselage. It really is the aft fuselage of the, the helicopter. We've got these support tubes. So this is a, a basic truss structure. Not a lot of attention paid to aerodynamics in this because at 65 knots cruise, not that big a deal. Uh, but the doors are off. This, this can have the doors either on or off. Uh, cold weather, you'd probably want the doors on it. Uh, in fact, it also has a heater. If you look at uh, this part here, this is the intake for the heater. So there's, you get a little bit of ram air coming in, but there's, there's a, a blower here that sucks the air in down through this pipe. And this is the, the muffler. So it brings it in. There's no mixing of the exhaust gases. So these exhaust pipes, just you know, blow completely out, but this housing here around the muffler, we take the, the uh, ambient air that's blown in here, or sucked in, and it's blown down past this, and then it comes out after it's had a chance for the exhaust heat and the exhaust pipes to heat it up, comes back in through here, and this is a control valve to control the flow of air in the cockpit, goes into the cockpit, provides some sort of cabin heat. Uh, not unusual. Uh, for aircraft, a lot of, most light aircraft have a, a heater system that's uh, similar to that. Uh, if we look at the tail rotor, when we move the pedals, you notice what we're doing here. Notice these control cables. There's a, a linkage down here that feeds into these control cables. So this control cable moves this rod here. It's the pitch change rod that, that moves uh, fore and aft inside the, the tail boom that then translates its motion. Well, when we walk around the back, you can see how it translates the motion. And look at the, the tail rotor blades, changes the pitch of the tail rotor blades to adjust the amount of anti-torque. So it's really a very, the tail rotor is really a variable pitch propeller. And that's how we control anti-torque. On the collective, you'll notice this here, this is a twist throttle, just like a motorcycle throttle. That, that's the power control for the engine. That adjusts how much power, instead of having a, a most light aircraft have a push-pull uh, throttle control or possibly a quadrant on the side. This uses a twist grip because you don't have enough hands. So you've got one hand, your left hand in this case, on the collective as well as the throttle. So this is collective. The, the pitch is changing the same on all the blades at all the same time. Whereas here, it's changing different depending on where you are because this is the side link. So this is analogous to uh, pitch and roll control or aileron and elevator on a fixed wing airplane. Simple instrumentation, uh, again, weight is the enemy. Everything extra you add is weight that you have to lift. The seats are even uh, netting. They don't, they don't have regular cushions per se because that's lighter. Uh, the skid type landing gear, excuse me, the, uh, the wheels are just for moving it around on the ground. You don't taxi with it. You hover taxi if you need to taxi. Is this the brake? No, this is this actually moves the wheel down. It's not in contact with the ground. It lifts the, oh. the skids off the ground, and then it, you can lock it in. There's a, you put a bolt through here, and that locks it down so you can push it around from the ramp. 
Uh, let me go over and spin the rotor. Actually, the tail rotor drive the main rotor. Watch your head out. Again, I don't think anybody's tall enough, but possibly. You notice the, uh, the, the drive shaft for the tail rotor is spinning much faster. The tail rotor is so much smaller to generate enough force, it has to spin a lot faster. So it's geared down, I think it's about 10 to one. So about every 10 rotations of the tail rotor for one rotation of the main rotor to, to get the right amount of thrust. Limited to somewhere typically around 300, 400 RPM on the main rotor, uh, just because of tip speed limits. This was a sending unit to give you fuel level. Uh, and that's about it, basically. There's a, a pitot tube. You can talk about that. This is all old right here. So there's a pitot tube that comes out here. It's probably getting knocked off so we just hold it off with the cockpit. Yeah, it's a very simple machine. Yeah, this engine probably weighs 350 pounds. Gross weight, 1,600, so it's about a quarter of the gross weight of the helicopter. In about, I think it's about a 25-gallon tank. I think, it's, I think that's what the spec said. So about 150 pounds of gas, approximately. So between the, the uh, engine and the fuel, you know, we're looking at about a third of the takeoff with the helicopter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the rotor using the tail rotor. And well, before I do that, somebody uh, actually brought up, everybody else gather around here, and actually somebody actually the rudder belts, and you can get get around here so you can see how the pitch change mechanism works. And you notice the tail skid, like I mentioned earlier, so with a high pitch, you won't uh, get contact with the ground with the tail. Rudder. So. The cable, the, the pedals are connected to a linkage that actuates the cable. So uh, move the rudder pedals. Come, come back around here. Don't be shy. Uh, and you can see how this changes the pitch of the uh, so, so there's a link that comes through, and then pushes this in, this collar in and out, which changes the blade uniformly. You don't need differential. You're just trying to generate more or less uh, anti-torque or yaw force. Uh, through this linkage that changes the pitch. So keep moving the pedals. You see that pitch rod comes out here and then through this bell crank moves this collar in and out to uniformly changes so that the tail rotor can spin inside this pitch change collar and allow it to change the, the pitch while it's rotating. Now, stay in the cockpit and start working the controls and, and watch the rotor as you move the controls. It, and you can tr uh, first do the uh, cyclic, just stir it around, move it right, left, whatever. And you can see the, if you watch closely, that the pitch is varying as it goes around. Now pull the collective up, or push it down, and it collectively moves the blades. And you can see, watch, look at the uh, rotating versus the sw fixed swash plate. So the, the fixed swash plate is the non-rotating swash plate that transfers the, the motion into the pitch change links to change the angle of attack of each of the blades. That's how a helicopter works. So feel free to play around with it, get your hands on it, move the controls, do whatever. Uh, see how this artwork machine works. So there's a barrier between these two so this can spin and transfer the force through these pitch change links. Uh, do a, a right roll. So you see it only moves it one way, then uh, pitch up and down. And now do collective. Collective is on the left. Yeah, pull it up. 
and that changes the race of the pitch. 